Greenland is the second biggest ice sheet in the world and it contains enough ice to raise global sea levels by seven meters, which would mean goodbye to many of the world's most inhabited places if it all melted. So we should all be concerned if Greenland is melting as fast as some people think it is. This is The Biggest Loser, a series where we pitch the largest drivers of ice loss in Antarctica and Greenland against one another to find out who wins or who loses. I'm an Antarctic nerd and Jason Box is a Greenland expert. And it may just be that we're all losers. We're in Loserville, population us. Before we jump in, make sure you hit that bell button and subscribe to both of our channels. And drop us a like and a comment below, let us know what you think. The ice sheet is ringed by glaciers that empty directly into the ocean called tidewater glaciers. These guys are sensitive to warming in both the ocean and the atmosphere, which means that as climate warms, it's having a kind of double whammy effect in Greenland. But what's the biggest loser when it comes to Greenland melting? In this video, I'm gonna get the lowdown on Greenland melting from my pal, Jason. So what happens to Greenland's mass balance throughout the year? What does that look like? But before Jason answers that, I'm gonna rudely interrupt to tell you a little bit about Greenland's mass balance. Mass balance describes the difference between ice gains and ice losses. When it's positive, the ice sheet is growing and the snowfall overshadows all of the drains on ice put together. When it's negative, the snow that falls isn't enough to compensate for all the losses, which come from icebergs breaking away or meltwater running off the surface or ice simply evaporating into thin air. Anyway, back to that question. So what happens to Greenland's mass balance throughout the year? What does that look like? Yeah, in, in what I call the cold season, uh, winter, the ice sheets gaining mass, it, it, it comes into a, a mass budget surplus of some 300 gigatons. And then in the warm season, uh, there's a larger loss than the gain. So it's clear from independent measurements that the, the, the Greenland ice sheet is a net loser. What's the current rate of change in Greenland then? We've, I've seen lots of estimates that, you know, melting is happening a hundred times faster than previously expected. So what's going on there? Well, the average loss rate of ice from Greenland is about 270 gigatons per year. And that's, you know, kind of a, a number that doesn't have much meaning to people. Another way of thinking about that is 0.7 millimeters per year of global sea level rise, which also sounds small. Um, it, it, it isn't that small because it's adding up year after year. If you divide that by the 8 billion people on planet Earth, they would each get the equivalent of a bathtub of water every day of the year over that same time period of, say, 20 years. So it's a huge freshwater perturbation to the surrounding seas and there's some big questions about is there a disruption of the north atlantic ocean circulation and and what effects does that have for the global climate um and of course just the sea level rise which is not just from greenland melting but from land ice around the world all right then jason so paint us a picture what is the kind of dominant driver of melting in greenland the dominant driver is persistent atmospheric circulation anomalies, uh, like uh, those which deliver uh, a chain of storms uh, from the south and so-called atmospheric rivers. The most extreme melting for Greenland occurs when the atmosphere gets stuck in a position that's delivering heat from the south. What sort of effects do we see on the ground in those situations? There is some interaction between the increasing meltwater from atmospheric driven heating with ice flow. It's clear that the land terminating parts of the Greenland ice sheet, they do speed up when there's an increased meltwater delivery, whether it's from melt or rain. I don't think the ice sheet cares. And so does that mean that there's more melting happening from the atmosphere or more from the ocean, or is it kind of a balance of the two? Right. Uh, the competition for Biggest Loser involves also how much melting comes from a warming ocean and the southern Greenland glaciers that doubled in speed 
suddenly in the mid 2000s was triggered by warm ocean currents. They were delivered because of a persistent atmospheric circulation that that helped uh, push this so-called Atlantic water up along West Greenland. And so for some moments in the climate history, the ice loss from underwater melting is the, the leading loss factor. But over a longer period of time, it, it's clear that more melting originates from the atmosphere when it drives uh, extra heat onto the ice sheet. And has melting been accelerating? Is it different to what previous predictions were estimating? If we rewind to like 2012, the previous 10 years for Greenland had the ice loss just dropping off the chart and it looked to be really accelerating. But subsequently, the atmospheric circulation, which is one of the drivers here, it, it got more variable and we had some cool years. And so it's more of a linear loss from Greenland. Uh, Greenland is warming slower than the Arctic around it. This three times Arctic warming than the globe is largely coming from Arctic sea ice loss and it's over the ocean. Greenland warming is only like under twice the, the, the global rate. So fortunately, uh, Greenland, I don't think it's a, a runaway ice loss problem. And can we say what we're already committed to from Greenland? Right. We studied um, the ice loss commitment from Greenland and the variations from year to year, they actually point squarely at uh, a, an ice loss commitment that right now stands at at least 27 centimeters of global sea level rise. But that's if the climate stayed constant up to 2019. Climate will continue warming and so the ice loss commitment grows in a high emission scenario greenland's ice loss commitment reaches more than one meter by end of century so we have some time to get off of that uh, high emission scenario and basically half the the sea level commitment from greenland to about half a meter by end of century so what would a lower melt or perhaps more optimistic future path for this century look like in Greenland and how would that differ from a more pessimistic view? Say like the difference between something close to the Paris climate agreement scenario and the high emission scenario uh, is about a factor of two for Greenland's sea level contribution. So there's a lot of value in finding ways to reduce carbon emissions and get into carbon dioxide removal. So there's the answer. The biggest loser in the Greenland melt story is surface melt. And a lot of it happens when weather patterns conspire to bring much warmer air up from the south and drive extreme melting events. On the surface of it, that doesn't sound great, especially given that our atmosphere is heating up extremely rapidly and we're seeing more and more of those extreme events. However, because temperatures in the atmosphere can change much faster than in the ocean, in some ways it's a bit of a silver lining because it means that melting can slow down pretty quickly too once we reduce emissions and turn down that dial on the climate heating. Shifting into that lower emissions world that Jason spoke about is still possible. And even though it still means some degree of further sea level rise, it's far preferable to the alternative. But something we really need to steer clear of if we're going to minimise the ice losses from Greenland is tipping points. Which, funnily enough, is the subject of our next video. If you like this one, please give it a like and a share. It really helps. And see you next time.